grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, everyone. It's kind of strange. You look at Orel and John, and you say good morning, because they're, they're always just a little behind. Or a little bit ahead. Oh, dear. The Mass is being offered for the intentions of uh, St. Anthony Padua Cathedral Parish parishioners. And according to the government, this is going to be the way we're going to do masses yet for a while. Because according to the latest edict, it looks like we're not coming back till July. And by the time you come back in July, I will be gone. So I find that just a little hard to swallow, but it's the way it is. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church and every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, a crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts, Cretans and Arabs. In our language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. O Lord, how manifold are your works. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, for just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week. The doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed him his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when he saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Luke is re renowned for a couple of things in his gospel, part one, and the gospel part two that we oftentimes refer to as the Acts of the Apostles. Luke wrote both of those. And one of the characteristics of his style of writing is that he likes to paint pictures. He likes to draw up a picture so you can imagine what it looks like. And his purpose for drawing the pip picture is to hopefully get you to try to immerse yourself in that scene and then to discover where you are in this picture. What place in this picture do you belong? And so that's one of the reasons. And, and the other thing that he goes with that is the words that he uses are hardly accidental. So we have Luke's description, and he's the only one who gives us the description of Pentecost. And it starts off with a wind blowing in the room. And he says a violent wind, the sound of a violent wind. Okay. Does anybody know where that image originates? You got to go all the way back to Genesis. And God breath over the waters that brings forth life. And so Luke sees this Pentecost as God doing that creation trick again and bringing forth life in that room. The other thing that's important is that they are gathered as a group. There's not just one or two individuals. The community is gathered. The community of disciples and apostles are gathered in a room and they're praying. That's not accidental either, because part of what Luke wants us to understand is that this comes about through community and prayer, and that that is part of the way that we receive and get in tune with the Holy Spirit. That this Western notion of our relationship is totally a one-on-one -on -one with God is a very Western notion. It's not found in the scriptures. If you look, God over and over again comes for a people, for the, the Israelites, for a family. He, he goes to Abraham to form a nation. He is about community. And so the Pentecost takes place in this, the smallest community of believers at the beginning. And they're doing it in the spirit of prayer. They're ready for this. They're looking for something. They don't know exactly what they're looking for, but that's not important. They're looking for something. They're waiting for God to take the initiative, and he does. The next image that he, <laughs> the next image that Luke uses 
is tongues of fire. Now that's a little oddball, don't you think? Tongues of fire. And we see it in pictures and everything else. But what is fire? Fire is the symbolism of passion. He's going to set their hearts aflame. That they're going to have a passion for this. Unfortunately, we're about 2,000 years removed from Pentecost, and too often we Christians have the spirit of not passion, but oh, 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 oh. like I think sometimes the passion is, I don't know where it went. It's like, uh -huh. we seem to forget that this is supposed to be something that's supposed to light up our hearts. It's supposed to set our hearts on fire, something that we can get our teeth into, something that we can be passionate about. Do you think that's how you would describe your faith? Are you passionate for Jesus? Are you passionate about your faith? Or is it just, hmm, hmm. So Luke wants that notion that the, the Spirit comes into us to light us up, to, to grant us enthusiasm and fire. And sometimes I wish it was a little bit more of that. But we as the church sometimes have actually snuffed out the fire, I think. We, we, people get enthusiastic and they get going and we kind of put our weight down on them and we basically say sometimes, calm down. And I, why should they? Is it necessary to calm down in order to be a good Catholic? Some people might think so, but I don't understand how that works. If you got a fire in your belly about something, calming down is about the worst thing you can do, is it not? If you have passionate about, oh, I, I can, if you're passionate about a hockey team, like the, well, here we go, we, Montreal, by the time you see this tomorrow morning, Montreal and Toronto will have played their second game. And I don't want to predict who's going to most likely to win that game. But did you ever watch people watching a hockey game? Do they sit there and go, oh, oh. I have seen people get so passionate that they have thrown things at a TV. They throw things at the TV. They yell at the referee on TV. I am sure of one thing for sure, the referee never heard any of that. And I know that if you throw a shoe at the television set, the coach on the other team is not going to mind. I, I think, but it rouses up that passion in us that we get excited watching these sort of things. Is there any of that excitement about our faith? Is there any inkling of that same sort of excitement about our relationship with Jesus, about the life of the Spirit within us? Is it there at all? And if it isn't, sh should it not be? Because St. Saint, Saint Luke describes the Pentecost in this way, saying, hey, you know, this is the beginning, this is new life, this is marvelous, now grab a hold of it and go and do something with it. That is not just for us, that is there so that we will build this kingdom of God together. Our faith is not private. It is supposed to be enormously personal. And if it's not, then yeah, we've missed something. But it is not just between us and God. We are implicated as a community, and we have a community of believers with us. We do this together. We do this as the people of God not as a bunch of collection of individuals that happen to get in the same place at the same time. So I wish that some of that spirit that St. Luke was trying to engender with his description of Pentecost, I pray sometimes that it, it will return. I pray sometimes that if it's here, it will be revived and it will, we will be enlivened and enriched by the presence of the spirit. Uh, 
Can you imagine how different we would be if even half of our community had that enthusiasm for God, had that eagerness for God, the building of God's kingdom? Can you imagine how enormously different we would be if we embraced the role of disciples, embraced the role of being witnesses to God, instead of we don't want to be bystanders. We don't want to be spectators. We want to be the ones who get, get in there and get our hands dirty and get with it and give it to others. That's what Luke was trying to do with his story of Pentecost and what he describes of what happens come after. The apostles that were in that room are never the same. They are never the same. They were a bunch of cowards who, who go out into the world full of fire, full of courage, and willing to do anything to build the kingdom of God. And I mean anything. When they got the spirit, they were never the same. We should never be the same either. Our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophet. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Renewed by the word of God and animated with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, let us confidently bring our needs before the Lord. For those who undertake the ministry of confessor, May they be granted the gifts of counsel and understanding as they offer tender care to those burdened by sin. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the earth we call home, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may our planet be renewed both physically and spiritually. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who live in fear, May the peace of the Lord free them from all anxieties and grant them the courage to use their talents and gifts for the glory of God. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all gathered here, may our ears be attuned to the direction and guidance of the Holy Spirit as we seek to do God's will in our lives. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our parish community, especially for the sick and for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, for the lonely, for those who have no one to pray for them, and for all the intentions that we hold in our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all blessings, with attentive care you nurture and sustain all that you have created. 
Hear our prayers that by meeting you in word and sacrament, we might be inspired to build a society governed by peace and justice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Also, please keep in your prayers uh, the sister of Father Leo. I don't know her last name, married name, but her first name is Kuget. She passed away last week, this past week, uh, and the funeral arrangements have 
are not uh, completed, but they will take place next week. Well, keep Father Leo and that family in your prayers. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Funny how that works. I start dancing and I think about Leo. Imagine that. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, open to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the child. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. First proclamation, the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you a thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
with St. Anthony of Padua, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to continue in faith and charity, to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Serge our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. I miss you, Lamb. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. With uh, the announcement from the government, the imperial government, about how long this lockdown is going to last and everything else, I must honestly admit that I was a little, uh, not just dismayed, but a tad bit heartbroken. I never imagined that in all my years that my last month would be without a perish, and that I'd go after 34 years of priesthood, I feel like General MacArthur, old soldiers never die, they just kind of fade away. I'm starting to think old Monsignors never die, they just fade away. And I was really looking forward to say, being able to say goodbye in a proper fashion. Um, I'm just it's not going to happen. So, uh, I guess I'll get used to it. Maybe. But I don't think I have to like it. Um, I have spoken to John briefly about 
recording some sort of going away message. I guess that's the best we're going to be able to do. And we'll put it on Facebook and YouTube for those who have access to it. And I guess that'll be my goodbye. Well, hang in there. I don't imagine that's going to change before the end of June, but But there is a song that I, I listened to this week in an effort to try to get my spirits back up. Uh, it didn't totally succeed, of course, unless I wouldn't be talking this way. But it's still a song that I think is pertinent to uh, what we do. Uh, so... Those of you at home can use this time for meditation. Those of you here can also use this time for meditation. And this can mean anything you want it to mean. My life flows on in end. I hear the real, though far off hill that hail the new creation. No storm can shake my most calm, while to that rock I'm clinging, since Maybe I'll get there. Let us pray. O Lord, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ooh. This is going to look good on TV. This is. Hey, John, the blooper isn't mine. Don't include this as my blooper. <laughs> 